can't find nothing on the radio. Ready, Steve? Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Welcome to Songology. He's Bruce. He's Richard. And this is another episode from our Song of the Day archives. Enjoy. Welcome, Bruce. We're starting a new week. What's on tap for this week? This week, I'm thinking telephones. Telephones. Why not telephones? There's actually lots of songs featuring telephones. Now, are we now, talking the real telephones that hung on the wall or had a line plugged in, or the smartphones that everybody's walking around with today? I don't think anybody writes songs about smartphones, do they? If they are, I don't hear them. But then again, since, you know... It's, well, that, that's a little bit past your normal time period here. Yes, I, I don't much do the 21st century in music. Now and then, what little 21st century music I have listened to doesn't seem to talk about cell phones. Uh, we'll have to pass it on to Superior Jello and see if she knows anybody that does... Very good idea. She smart might know phones. that. Yes. She might Maybe know we that. Maybe can have some smartphone music when it came from the Geek. The Geek Show, absolutely. Because the thing about telephones and songs is particularly pay phones. And in fact, most of the tunes that I have for you this week feature not just telephones, but pay phones. And that is something that I bet there's a low lot of youth of today that haven't a clue what a pay phone is. Absolutely. I mean, so you better describe it. <laughs> well, I mean, very simply, I mean, look at any Superman comic book used to change his clothes in the phone booth, right? Right. And actually, if you go back into the... <laughs> what does Superman do now with the smartphone? I have no idea. Actually, <laughs> if you remember in the first of the Superman movies, the one that yes. uh, Chris Reeve made. Yes. There is a scene where he has to do something, has to change his clothes as Clark Kent, and he runs by, and they have those little sort of phone half shells. Yes, yeah, so it's, so like, so it's like a, a quarter of an egg or something like that. Yeah, and, and he looks at it and smiles and kind of shakes his head ever so slightly and runs off down an alley or something. <laughs> like, go find a cardboard box to hide behind or something. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing that. Yep. If you go back to old movies, I'm a bit of a fan of, of old movies. Back in the 30s and the 40s, a telephone booth was much larger, often had a sort of a proper door that closed and yes. a little place you could sit down. Yes. And so it was quite the deal. And you used to have to go and plug money in. And occasionally you had to put in a whole bunch of money in advance before they would even connect the call. Or the operator would, as we're going to hear actually in today's little tune, the operator would butt in and tell you that you had to put in more money. Uh -huh. uh, and so you had to do it or you're you're not talking to anybody anymore. And also, I mean, you had to, in those days of pay phones and so forth, there was a lot more interaction with operators. Yes. Because you had to. If you didn't have a phone book or something, you call information, etc. So now it's all robots, eh? It's all electronic push one for this and two for that sort of thing. Yes. I mean, they do have operators, but how many people have actually placed an operator-assisted call? I mean... That hardly ever happens anymore. All right. Well, I bet a lot of people that use phones don't even know such a thing exists. Now, did you not tell me that you still have pay phones in Creston? I don't know about in Creston, but Yak had them. Now, Yak on Christmas, Yak got a Christmas present of cell phone service in that corridor. So who knows how much longer pay phone will be there for. Absolutely. And they've been, they have been removed practically everywhere. Well, it was just the in the news that TELUS won approval from the CRTC to remove the remainder of their pay phones. So they're going to die. Yep. And we won't have pay phones to write songs about. No. Or to and, help us write and songs. And if we want to listen to songs about phones, you and I are going to have to listen to some more modern music. There you go. <laughs> or we could just go back to the old stuff. Yep. Like this. So to start off telephones, I'm going to tell you a story, right? It's story time here on Song of the Day. I'll pull up my cushion. Have a yes, seat. Yes, pull up your cushion. Is everybody ready and comfortable? We're then ready. Let's, then let's begin. Once upon a time, there was a young boy named Sheldon, and he grew up in the big American city of Chicago. Now, growing up, and as a, as a young man, as a um, 
teenager, high school uh, student and so forth. He had a pretty normal childhood, but he had lots of talent, particularly in art. He loved to draw and he loved to write. These were things that were really, really big in Sheldon's world. But the other thing that was absolutely huge in Sheldon's world was his first girlfriend, who was a young lady named Sylvia. And Sheldon was quite taken with Sylvia, even after they left high school, they graduated from high school, and they sort of went their separate ways. Sylvia went into university and was pursuing her studies. Sheldon spent some time in the army, and then he started to travel, and he started to do various things. But all through that time, Sheldon kept up his correspondence with Sylvia. She was kind of his first love and really the love of his life. And Oftentimes, he would call her from wherever he was, and quite a number of times, he would ask her to come out and join him wherever he was so that they could live happily ever after. So he never really got over his love for Sylvia. Now, why am I telling you about Sheldon and Sylvia and their young love story? Because actually it ends up as a song. Sheldon is actually better known as Shel Silverstein. And he is, well, was a, uh, a poet, was a cartoonist for many years uh, for Playboy magazine, of all things, but in other places as well. But he's also most famous as an author of children's books. Mm-hmm. So he was, actually wrote some under his own name, some under the name Uncle Shelby. His books have been translated into more than 30 languages. Now, Uncle Shelby sounds familiar. I'm thinking of children's books. Having had two kids that pretty much grew up in the children's section of the High River Library. Well, absolutely. And and so you may remember books like Where the Sidewalk Ends or The Giving Tree, Grab Your Socks. Uh, was a book that he wrote, Uncle Shelby's Zoo, Don't Bump the Glump and Other <laughs> Fantasies, and The Missing Peace, A Light in the Attic, Runny Babbit. So uh, tons of books. Sold more than 20 million copies, as I say, around, uh, oh. around the world. Hugely popular. He was also a songwriter. He wrote children's songs, including The Unicorn. You remember the Irish Rover song, The Unicorn? We always yeah. think of that as an Irish Rover song. Yeah. Shel Silverstein wrote that. Oh, okay. And I remember as a kid, that was one of my favorite songs. Absolutely. Well, Uncle Shelby wrote that for you. Uh (laughs) And when he wasn't writing children's stuff, he was sometimes writing more humorous things, like one of Johnny Cash's signature songs, A Boy Named Sue, was written by Shel Silverstein. Oh. And probably one of the goofiest songs, at, at some point in the future on Song of the Day, uh, I'm going to feature songs that always make me laugh. Top of the list would be Cover of the Rolling Stone by Dr. Hook, yeah. written by Shel Silverstein. Oh. But also by Dr. Hook was a song that Shel Silverstein wrote about his love, Sylvia. And was a hit for Dr. Hook. It was called Sylvia's Mother. Mm-hmm. And what this really, really is, I loved finding this out because it confirmed something for me that I had, I had always thought. I was kind of a bit of a holdout. I'd heard and read in various sources that Sylvia's Mother was a parody of a love song. And I think the people who wrote that, or who thought that, thought that way because of the sort of things that he had written otherwise, you know, things like Boy Named Sue and, and yeah, Cover yeah, the Rolling yeah, Stone. Yeah, yeah. And because Dr. Hook was actually known as a kind of a party band, a have fun band when they were playing some pretty wild music and having a whole lot of fun on the stage. And so I think many people thought as a result of that, that Sylvia's mother was meant to be a parody, meant to be fun. It's not. It is a straight up love song. And when Dr. Hook was performing this, it was done straight because they knew that this came, Shel Silverstein used to hang out with Dr. Hook and, and do all sorts of things. And they knew that this came from his life. The song itself actually is based on an incident that really happened. One of the calls that he made back to Sylvia, he got Sylvia's mom, and it was the day that Sylvia was packing to leave to go to meet up with the guy that she was going to marry. And in the song, there's some details that are changed for the song. Her last name was not Avery. Uh, right. it, es- it escapes me. I, I can't. But I know a way you can find out. I'll come to that in a minute. 
Her name wasn't Avery, and she wasn't marrying a fellow down Galveston way, except, I mean, in the, I suppose, in the, in the global sense, the larger sense, because she was going to Mexico. Her fiancé was actually a guy who was at times a, a painter, but mostly a bullfighter, of all things. Huh. And so Sylvia's parents are not happy that she's leaving to go off and marry this Mexican bullfighter. And in the middle of all of that and the turmoil of packing and going away and, and so forth, her old love shell phones. And there was a little bit of interaction. He actually did get to speak to her, which in the song, the caller doesn't actually get to speak to Sylvia. Right. Sylvia's mother stops the yeah. interaction. But in real life, he actually did get to speak to her for a little bit. And how do I know all this? Well, there was a guy by the name of Arian Vlakveld, who was a television producer in the Netherlands. He produced for Dutch public TV. He happened to be over at his brother's place, where his brother had guests in from out of town. One of them was an American woman. And they're chatting over uh, a glass of wine in the garden. And he says, oh, well, I'm a television producer. You know, this comes up sort of thing. And he talks about the sorts of documentaries that he produces. And this woman says, you know, I know Sylvia's mother. You know the Dr. Hook song, Sylvia's mother. I met Sylvia's mother. I used to work with her at a high school. It was. <laughs> and that's how we found out that it was. a. It's real. Yeah, it's real. And so he didn't have a whole lot to go on. But he decided that he was going to set out on this quest to find them. And he did track them down. And Sylvia at the time was a museum director in Mexico City. She, I believe, now is back in Chicago. And there is a very short video, which I have sent you, and you can throw up on the website or YouTube. We'll, or, we'll put a link on our uh, Facebook page. There you go, your Facebook page. I don't, as people can probably tell, I don't really know Facebook. I don't do that, so I don't really understand it. But there you go. I'm just old fashioned. So you get to actually see Sylvia's mother and Sylvia, and they tell you the story, some of which I've related this morning. So in terms of Dr. Hook, I can tell you that there were actually two lead singers in Dr. Hook. The guy for whom the band was sort of named, the guy with the eye patch, as you always think of Dr. Hook as the guy with the eye patch, that's Ray Sawyer. The other lead singer who is the singer on this tune is Dennis LeCourier. And Dennis always said that, always did his best to really sing this song straight. Right. He says, I knew that poor guy in the phone booth, and I knew what he would be feeling. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so yeah. he always sang it as straight as he could. Unfortunately, people, for whatever reason, because people are dumb at times, when they get to the part in the chorus where the line is the operator says 40 cents more for the next three minutes, yeah. there was a thing that developed in Dr. Hook shows. And so people would pull out 40 cents and hurl it at the stage, <laughs> which could hurt a lot Yeah, <laughs> if it came from the balcony. Yeah. You know, so, you know, please don't do that. There was a ZZ Top song that they actually took out of their set at one stage. Not this one, but a different song where, where ZZ Top was always getting pelted by coins from, thrown from the audience. And they had to decide whether, do we like the change? Because they would get about 50 bucks in change at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, because it was a little bit of beer money or whatever. Yeah. Dr. Hook really got sick of this, you know, getting pelted by coins. It was their first single, and they have had a fairly successful career thereafter. Shell Silverstein, by the way, did go on to marry and have a daughter. Huh. Uh, the song was uh, got to number five in the U.S., got to number two in the U.K., and was kept out of the number one spot in the U.K. by Donny Osmond singing Puppy Love. So, Ouch. <laughs> yeah, that hurts, doesn't it? It does. Well, particularly because I think this is such a great song. It's a wonderful I mean, it's, song. And it's so sad. Yeah. I Actually, a brief sidebar to warn people, telephone songs are almost always really sad songs. Yeah. So this is kind of a sad song week here on Song of the Day. So having warned you, let us drop a few coins in this slot, dial the number looking for Sylvia, but instead we get to talk to Sylvia's mother. And as usual, I have to stop her right there due to the wonderful world of fair use rules. I have a link to the video Bruce talked about with Sylvia and her mother. The link should be right down here unless you're on a mobile device. It will be up there. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so. 
We're on Facebook, and you can visit our website, songology.ca. Now here's your chance to go on and listen to the music, or go on to the next episode.